At the beginning of the movie, we were shown Brunheld and Gaul discussing the next match. Gaul asked Brunheld who would fight in the fourth round. Not long after, one of the gods came, which was Heracles. It could be seen that the three of them were very close because they had one opinion, which was against the annihilation of humankind. Heracles told Brunhild that he would be the one who would fight on behalf of the gods in this fourth round. After saying this, Heracles walked away. In the middle of his walk, Loki came to Heracles. Loki said that Heracles was too close to Brunhild. Plus, Heracles was a demigod, just like the other Valkyries. Loki was confused about which side Heracles would defend. But Heracles denied it and said, I oppose the annihilation of humankind if I manage to win this match in the fourth round. As the god's champion, I will surely defeat my opponent. Hearing Heracles' words, Loki was confused about whose side Heracles was on. Then Heracles left and said that he was on the side of justice. Meanwhile, Gaul was still confused about who would fight in the fourth round against Heracles. Brunhild explained the characteristics of human representatives to Gaul. He was the vilest and most vicious human that ever existed. Hearing this, Gol was surprised, as if she knew who Brunhild was referring to. Long story short, the battle for the fourth round had already begun. The fighter in this fourth round was Jack the Ripper from the human side. The audience couldn't believe that the one who represented humanity in this fourth round was Jack the Ripper. One of the men explained a little about Jack's past, where Jack was the most heinous killer ever, to be precise, in the 1800s in the city of London. He had at least killed five prostitutes with his knife. Even Scotland Yard could not find any clues about this case. Likewise, Sherlock Holmes could not solve the case. On the other hand, Heracles, who knew his opponent was Jack, didn't seem to believe he would face a killer like Jack. Why not like Lu Bu, Adam, and Kojiro, who represent humanity? Even the three of them received praise from the gods for their way of fighting. Heracles told in ancient times, precisely in the region of Thebes, Greece, there was a boy named Castor. He was beaten by two naughty children trying to seize his cow. Not long after that, Alcides came. Alcides himself was Heracles when he was human. Alcides was a child who had more tenacity and passion than anyone else. The two naughty children came at night when Alcides and Castor were resting. The two naughty children challenged Alcides to drink Zeus' blood in the temple. The blood of Zeus was called Ambrosia. It was said that whoever drank the blood of Zeus would gain extraordinary strength. However, if the person who drank the blood were ordinary, that person would immediately die. Meanwhile, in Valhalla, the gods were discussing the annihilation of humankind. Some gods agreed to annihilate because humans always made a mess and destroyed whatever they encountered. Several gods would intervene to do this, such as Loki and Shiva. Because Thebes was in Ares' territory, Ares was the one who would intervene in all of this. Long story short, Ares came to Thebes. The citizens who saw this could only surrender and pray for their safety, unlike Alcides bravely confronted Ares and the other holy troops. When Alcides was about to attack Ares, Ares easily kicked Alcides until he had to be blown away. While the citizens who saw this underestimated Alcides as if what he was fighting right now was not an ordinary human but a god, because there was no other choice, Alcides drew Zeus' blood from his pocket, and without further ado, he immediately drank Zeus' blood. The citizens and Ares, who saw this, thought that Alcides would die when he drank Zeus' blood. But who would have thought Alcides would come forward? He passed the test when Ares advanced. This time Alcides indeed possessed extraordinary strength. One of the soldiers did not accept Alcides' behavior and immediately came to attack Alcides without thinking twice. And of course, Alcides could easily defeat the soldier. Likewise, the other soldiers who did not accept this attacked Alcides, but Alcides defeated them all easily. Currently, only Ares was the only one who left. They gave the greatest blow to be able to beat each other. When they were about to kill each other, Zeus came to separate them both. Zetus saw that Alcides managed to drink his blood. Zeus then invited Alcides to come with him to become a god. With this, Alcides could easily protect humankind. Alcides requested Zeus, I will accept your offer. If you want to accept my offer, that is never again disturb the peace of humankind. Hearing this, Zeus agreed with Heracles' request. As a result, for 4,000 years, the gods no longer disturbed the peace of humankind, while Alcides was now officially a god known as Heracles. Moving on to Jack the Ripper's past, he was born in London, precisely in the White Tipple, in 1888. He was the son of a prostitute named Mary Ann Nichols. Mary herself was pregnant with five children from her previous relationship with several men. However, she aborted her five children. When she was pregnant with her sixth child, she had no intention of aborting it because she wanted to marry the man with her sixth child, Jack the Ripper, as an excuse, hoping the man would accept her. In short, Jack the Ripper had grown into an adult and looked the same as most other children. While looking for food in the trash at the back of the restaurant, he got a loaf of bread. 
The restaurant owner was angry because Jack had taken the food from the trash. Jack saw a red aura in the restaurant owner, which meant anger. Because there was no other choice, Jack finally apologized to the person. Eventually, the man forgave Jack and told Jack to leave. Arriving at home, he saw his mother being scolded by a man. Then Jack asked his mother, are you okay? With a warm smile, his mother replied that she was okay. Mary saw a wound on Jack's right arm. Jack had the wound when the owner of the restaurant beat Jack earlier. Mary used the money from her previous relationship to treat Jack's wound. Jack saw a very beautiful aura from his mother, which was yellow gold. At night, while Jack was reading a book, Jack, he was teased by a woman named Anne. She said that Jack was an unlucky child because he was born in a place like this. But Jack denied this and said that he was the happiest child. The next day, Jack saw his mother crying again. She told Jack that she was sad because the man she liked had been married for a long time to another woman. When Anne left, Jack tried to calm his mother, but this time Mary was frustrated because the man she liked had broken his promises. Mary was angry and even said inappropriate words to Jack, I should never have given birth to you. Mary gave birth to Jack only so she could marry the man she liked. Hearing these words, Jack realized that the color in his mother was not for him, but only for the man his mother liked. Jack was just a tool to get the love of the man. Even now, Jack saw the red aura he used to see on the streets was in his own mother. Jack tried to calm his mother. When Jack tried to kill his mother, Jack saw a color he had never seen before, the color of fear. Then, without any guilt, Jack killed his mother with his knife. After killing his mother, Jack went to the residence of the man his mother meant to marry, and without further ado, Jack immediately finished off the man with the same knife. After that, Jack took the man's hat and left. Long story short, the city of London had experienced very rapid progress. Amid that progress, Jack's name had not been heard for a long time. Back to round four, where Heracles asked Jack to give up and said he would ask Zeus to save him from Niflimir's soul annihilation. Niflimir itself was the most mysterious and scary place in Nordic mythology. Hearing an offer from Heracles, Jack refused. Then he took out his Volender, similar to giant scissors. Not only that, but he also showed the sharpness of his Volender, which would cut whatever Jack wanted. Seeing Jack's determination, Heracles fought with all his might, but not even fighting yet, Jack had already left while Heracles, who saw that, immediately looked for where Jack had run. After seeing Jack's whereabouts, Heracles was confused about how he could. At a time like this, Jack was relaxing while drinking hot tea. When Heracles came out to approach Jack, he realized a trap was in front of him. Without a second thought, he immediately pulled the trap. But who would have thought the trap was connected to the knife that immediately rained down on Heracles' body? Heracles explained to Jack that no human weapon could hurt him. Then Heracles approached Jack. When he was about to beat Jack, Jack swiftly took out a launcher to get out of there. Of course, Heracles could easily catch up with Jack. Jack's Volender had to be destroyed when he repelled Heracles' attack, but who would have thought Jack would attack Heracles again with his knife without realizing it? This time, Jack's attack managed to injure Heracles' body. The gods were confused as to why this could happen. Then Jack explained to Heracles that the Volender he had previously used was a lie. The real Volender was a bag capable of extracting a knife. However, the knife could only match the size of the bag. Meanwhile, Gold was confused as to why Brunhild chose Jack as the representative of humankind. Then Brunhild answered that humans had a trait that a god didn't have, namely savagery. In the same place, Handel said that even though Jack was a serial killer, he managed to injure a god with his weapon. Jack again attacked Heracles with his knives. Even Heracles, this time, could only parry Jack's attack. Even though he received a barrage of attacks, Heracles persevered in advancing toward Jack. Sure enough, when Heracles was about to finish off Jack, Jack managed to fend off Heracles' attack with his umbrella. Seeing that Jack was no ordinary coward, Heracles released one of his powers, the Nemean Lion, marked by the growing tattoo on Heracles' body. Without thinking, Heracles immediately attacked Jack with his strength. As a result, Jack had to be bounced away because of the powerful force. When Jack woke up, he realized that his right arm was broken and without no pain at all, he managed to get his arm back to normal again. On the other hand, Loki, who saw the battle, asked Ares what happened to Heracles. Then Ares replied that before Heracles became a god, he had completed 12 tasks and mastered 12 divine knowledge. In every expanding tattoo, there was a price. Even an ordinary god would probably faint from the pain of the tattoo. When all the tattoos had covered his whole body, Heracles would die. Even so, as a god, Ares felt proud to have fought directly with Heracles. Back at the match, Jack continued to attack Heracles with his knife. Even this time, Heracles could only parry Jack's attacks. When he was about to attack Jack, Jack managed to escape using his rope. Then Jack again showered Heracles with his knife. 
and he took advantage of the string to add his throwing knife. Even Heracles couldn't move when a barrage of attacks from Jack hit him. Meanwhile, Hermes said even a god as strong as Heracles would lose if he received such a fatal attack. On the other hand, a friend of Heracles, Castor, was also there to support Heracles. Meanwhile, Heracles again released his power, Herculean Exodus. When Jack attacked again, Heracles managed to return Jack's attack. Even so terrible, Jack had to be hit by his own knife. But instead of being afraid, Jack thanked Heracles because he had returned to how he used to be. Jack knew the aura of Heracles, which was golden yellow, boldly saying this was the first time he would finish off a god in his life. Then Jack attacked Heracles again with his knife, and for the first time this time they did close combat. During their battle, the Big Ben clock there rang. Without thinking, Jack went straight to the top of the clock using his catapult, but who would have thought that Jack almost fell because his launcher missed? Seeing that there was a good opportunity for Heracles, he immediately hit Big Ben with his weapon. As a result, the tower collapsed due to the strong beat of Heracles. Then Heracles released his power, namely the Cretan Bull, while Jack the Ripper threw the clock at Heracles this time. Heracles did not know what would happen to him. He told Jack that only sacred weapons could injure him, but who would have guessed that Heracles' arm had to be broken by the Big Ben clock? Even the audience and the gods who saw this were shocked. How could this happen? On the other hand, Loki realized that Jack's Valenda was his glove. The bag and scissors he showed earlier were just a lie, so it meant that anything Jack touched would become a weapon. Hearing this, Ares seemed confused about what would happen to Heracles. Meanwhile, Brunhild told Gull that before Jack got the Valender, he visited Plock, who was the 11th Valkyrie to become the next volunteer, but Plock refused. Not long after, Jack came and with a cruel aura, Jack immediately forced Locke to become his Valender, because there was no other choice, finally, Locke wanted to become Jack's Valender. On the other hand, the audience gave Heracles encouragement. Heindal said something that Jack touched would become a weapon for him. Ares continued to grieve because he feared Heracles would lose in the fourth round. Zeus, who saw Ares was angry and immediately beat Ares. Zeus said, why are you the one who was down to see Heracles like that? Rest assured, he will not lose. Heracles did not want to give up just like that. Even now, Jack still saw the same color in Heracles. Jack respected Heracles because Heracles didn't flinch at all. Heracles said, I am a human appointed to be a god. That's why I know what's bad in humans and gods. Even so, I will still love and protect humankind. Hearing this, Jack was impressed with Heracles, and the color on Heracles this time was the same as his mother's. To end this, Heracles summoned the Hound of Hades to penetrate him. That way, he would easily finish the match. This was the twelfth task of Heracles, and in other words, this was Heracles' trump card. On the other hand, Zeus said, for now, they were racing against time. The longer the match took, Heracles would die. Heracles immediately attacked Jack without mercy, while Jack, this time, could only avoid attacks from Heracles. Jack had to get hit by Heracles. Even so, Jack was still able to survive. After that, Jack intended to leave. Unfortunately, Jack had not gone far from there, and Heracles came and hit Jack with his weapon, so that Jack had to fall and be impaled by the fence. Not knowing what was on Jack's mind, he tried to knock down the big building behind him using his shawl. Then Jack went to Heracles and took advantage of Heracles' power to get out of there. Meanwhile, Heracles had to be crushed by a huge building. Not long after, Heracles was back up from the ruins of the building. Heracles' persistence touched even the gods and the audience who saw the scene. Jack still saw the same aura on Heracles' body, even though the color was fake, just like his mother's. To end all of this, the two of them fought each other until, in the end, Jack had to be hit by a crushing blow from Heracles. Heracles returned to attack Jack, who had been unable to counter Heracles' attacks. When he got the right moment, Jack took out an iron fence to attack Heracles, but who would have thought the attack missed and sent Jack flying due to a punch from Heracles? Seeing Jack, who was blown away, the audience and the gods thought all this was over. But unexpectedly, Jack could still stand up and finish this match. Then Jack came to Heracles' place and without much ado, Jack immediately attacked Heracles with an iron fence again. Heracles dodged his attack. Even now, it was Jack who Heracles hit. When Heracles was about to end all of this, Jack swiftly finished off Heracles with his gloves, which previously Jack had deliberately smeared his gloves with his blood, intended for situations like this. Even at the end of his life, Heracles was still the same as before. He did not hold any grudge against Jack and still love humans. Meanwhile, the audience was sad to see Heracles died. Afterward, Heimdall announced the winner in this fourth round, Jack the Ripper. Then Hlok came out and left. Hlok told Jack, you better go to the hospital immediately.
By the time Jack was about to return, he had found that the human side and the entire audience did not appreciate his victory. He was pelted with rocks by the audience. Jack could only surrender and remain silent when it happened. Meanwhile, Gaul blamed Brunhild for the death of Heracles. But what could be done for everything that had happened, said Brunhild. Then she went to a room where the fallen warriors from the human side and Heracles were also there. Brunhild seemed saddened by Heracles' death. Meanwhile, Ares kept on crying, seeing the defeat of Heracles in contrast to Loki, who realized that all the events that happened to Jack were Jack's plan. He succeeded in deceiving all of them with this plan. Zeus became angry because the scores were equal at this time, 2-2. Two two. Zeus immediately took out his strength and destroyed the place. After destroying the place, they left. After the match, we were shown two samurai, Soji Okita and Aizami Kondo. They were discussing the previous fight. Even Soji was looking forward to being chosen to participate in the Ragnarok battle. Elsewhere, Guda came to meet Loki, and suddenly he invited Loki to fight him, but Loki refused the invitation. Then Loki told the Buddha that Valendra of the Valkyrie had extraordinary strength and could even match the power of the gods and finish them off. Not only that, but Loki also thought if only Buddha could conclude all of this. This was called Samavatana, namely entrusting destiny to one another so that an enormous power would be formed. After explaining it, Buddha still didn't understand what Loki meant. Then Loki immediately asked Buddha, Are you a traitor? Buddha quickly replied, If you are right, what do you want? It created a little feud between the two of them. Soon the seven auspicious gods came, and one of them went to the Buddha. Not accepting the Buddha's attitude, the man immediately attacked Buddha. But while eating his lollipop, Buddha managed to attack the man with his lollipop stick. Meanwhile, Loki, who saw this, joined the seven auspicious gods to fight Buddha. Buddha had a nature that no one wanted to be controlled by. Even Zeus was also unable to control Buddha. Not long after came Kojiro Sasaki. Kojiro came to defend Buddha because Buddha couldn't face eight gods alone. Not only Kojiro came there, but Soji and Kondo also came to help Buddha. Then the man came again and tried to kill Buddha with his gun. But Buddha casually dodged all the bullets that came out of the gun. Even the man was surprised that Buddha could do all that. Next, it was Loki's turn to attack, and Soji prepared to face Loki. Before they could start the fight, Zeus and Odin came. Zeus said if he did not like when there was a fight between allies. After the two of them arrived, they all left. Then Zeus came to Buddha and asked Buddha to return to his room. But Buddha refused and told Zeus that no one could control him, whether from the heavens or the earth. At the same time, Odin, who saw Buddha's behavior, looked annoyed. Even the aura that Odin released was able to scorch everything there. Meanwhile, Gaul apologized for her treatment earlier Brunhild. Brunhild didn't mind her words and just ignored her. Then the two of them went into a room where there were many doors leading to the main room. When they got to the room, they saw a huge figure. Even so big, the size of an ordinary person was nothing to him. Brunhild introduced the man to Gaul, Raiden Tingyman, a famous wrestler of his time. After introducing him to Gaul, Brunhild woke Raiden up from his sleep. Seeing Brunhild's arrival, all the women accompanying him immediately left the room. Brunhild told Raiden that now was his turn to fight. Then Brunhild summoned the mightiest Valkyrie there, Thrud, who had become his Valender. Because of the size of Thrud, Raiden's size was nothing. Seeing such a large figure, Raiden was fascinated by Thrud and vice versa. Thrud seemed to like Raiden. Gull who saw this was surprised because this was the first time Thrud looked so feminine in front of Raiden. On the other hand, the audience had been waiting for the next fight. We could see the arena that had been converted into a wrestler stage. As usual, Himbo welcomed the audience for the fifth match. Famous wrestlers were also present to see the fight. After that, Heimdall summoned a human representative to enter the battle arena, Raiden Tamiman, the greatest wrestler in history. Even as a wrestler, he had a very high win rate. That meant he only lost a few times. Then from the gods, Heimdall summoned a god from India, namely Shiva. When Shiva entered, the vibrations were so strong that even Aphrodite felt them. Meanwhile, Buddha could only smile watching this match. For his fifth match, Shiva fought Raiden Tingyman. All the gods from India also came to cheer on Shiva. Before the match started, Raiden threw salt in the middle of the stage. Shiva didn't even understand why Raiden would do that. Raiden Tamiman's past was explained. In Shen'ano province in January 1767, to be precise, a small family was living in peace. The family had a child who was three years old. However, Raiden could not walk at three like the other children. Raiden's mother always prayed for him to grow healthy and strong. One day, Raiden began learning to walk. As he was about to step towards his mother, all of Raiden's muscles rebelled, and even Raiden's ribs broke due to the massive muscles. 
but Raiden didn't give up easily. Finally, Raiden managed to get through it all. The muscles in Raiden's body managed to adapt to him to create something called a shell or hundred seals, which meant that Raiden's body could control all the muscles inside his body. Long story short, Raiden had now grown up like an ordinary child. Raiden himself was very interested in the world of wrestling. Raiden and the other kids were practicing wrestling together. When Raiden's turn came, Raiden could easily beat the kid. Even so strong, the boy thought Raiden was a monster. The next day, Raiden was pensive because his friends no longer wanted to play with him. He complained about why he was like this, but Raiden's mother said his power was a gift from the gods, and he should be able to use that power to help the weak. Long story short, Raiden had grown up, and his powers were used to help people who needed them. But one day, Raiden Village experienced a disaster called Tenmei Famine. The disaster left all the people in Shenano starving, and some even died from starvation. The next day, Raiden decided to wander to be able to find money to help the starving people in his village. After going through several obstacles, Raiden finally arrived at the village of Edo, where he intended to become a wrestler. When he got inside, he saw the figure of a wrestler who was eating so much rice. That person's name was Yohachi Yurakas. Seeing the rice, Raiden thought that if only he could send it to Shainano, it would help all the starving people. When it was Raiden's turn to fight, he said he didn't want all this energy to run out against all these ordinary wrestlers. In the end, it was Yurakase who intervened to confront Raiden. When the match started, Raiden had to lose at the hands of Yurakase, but he didn't give up easily and was persistent in training to become the strongest. Long story short, Raiden's first debut began. He managed to defeat his opponent with just one strike. Even Yurakase, who saw this, thought he had just trained a beast. After successfully passing through several matches, Raiden became a star in Edo. Even Shinano was now experiencing the side good effects of Raiden's popularity, but the heyday did not last long. In a match, Raiden had to face a weak person, and this incident made him remember his past. Because he didn't want that to happen again, Raiden finally gave up on the match. After the match was over, Raiden was scolded by Yurakase, but Raiden calmed Yurakase's heart by saying, Since childhood my mother always taught me to help people who are weak and never fight people weaker than me. To overcome all that, Yurakase provided a solution to Raiden that he must stop using his best techniques. There were four techniques, open shoves, double locks, open slaps, and front slams called kinjite. Even though he didn't use those four techniques, Raiden still won the match. During his 21-year wrestling career, Raiden had played 285 matches. He managed to win 254 times, lost 10 times, 14 times not decided, 2 times the draw, and 5 times without playing. Of all that, Raiden's winner reached 96%. Even now, everyone was calling Raiden the nickname Peerless Rekishi, but who would have thought that Raiden had to retire from the world of wrestling without ever using all his strength, which meant that Raiden only spent a few percent of his strength. Then it was shown Shiva's past. At that time, there were two gods from India, namely the god of Tempest and the god of Destruction, namely Rudra and Shiva. At that time, Rudra trained to strengthen himself while Shiva was relaxing and enjoying the cool breeze. Seeing Rudra constantly practicing, Shiva asked Rudra to dance together to relieve fatigue. While they were dancing, suddenly, two other gods approached them. The two gods reported that other gods were raging and looking for leaders in the area. Then Shiva and Rudra immediately came to the place they told about. When Shiva and Rudra came, they immediately killed the gods, disturbing their territory. With ease, Shiva and Rudra could finish them all. After defeating them all, Rudra told Shiva what Shiva would do next. Shiva replied that he would become Nataraja, or the master of the dance. Hearing this, Rudra conveyed his dream to Shiva that he wanted to stand at the top of India and be the strongest among the others. Then, Rudra invited Shiva to work together, and with that, they could easily achieve this dream and begin their journey. Long story short, one by one, the gods in India had defeated. Even today, they already had a lot of followers, but for every god they defeat, their burden would be even greater. One day they came face to face with Indra, the god of thunder. Rudra would come forward to face Indra. Despite spending a lot of energy, Rudra finally defeated the god of thunder. After successfully defeating the god of thunder, they were faced with Brahma and Vishnu. But as usual, they managed to defeat the two gods. Imperceptibly, they were already at the top of India after defeating 1,115 gods in their hands. Rudra invited Shiva to fight with him because Rudra thought only one god could stand at the top of India. Shiva finally complied with Rudra's wishes. Shiva considered this fight the best dance for the two of them. Finally, they fought to determine who the best among them was. Their sweat was like rain that rained down on the plains of India. 
Finally, Rudra was almost exhausted. Shiva asked Rudra not to attack him again because if that happened, he might lose Rudra in Shiva's hands and Rudra's dream would be in vain. For Rudra to stand on top of India, Shiva decided to give up. But Shiva had not yet uttered the word of surrender. Rudra had surrendered to Shiva beforehand. Hearing this, Shiva was surprised by what Rudra said. By surrendering Rudra to Shiva, Shiva had to bear the burden of 1,116 gods in India and the responsibility now shifted to Shiva's hands. Return to the fifth round battle. After Raiden threw salt into the middle of the stage, Raiden began to take a stance to attack. As a result, Shiva, who was off guard, had to be hit by a heavy kick from Raiden. Even though Raiden's kick was powerful, Shiva was happy that he found an equal opponent. Not yet ready, Raiden had come to attack Shiva, and Shiva was quickly able to ward off the attack. It didn't stop there, Raiden also landed another direct punch at Shiva. Just as he was about to end all of this, Shiva managed to fend off attacks from Raiden and landed a punch at Raiden. However, Raiden didn't give up and got back up. Even Shiva acknowledged the power of Raiden. Then Raiden again released his power to attack Shiva. With Thrud's help, Raiden could unleash all of his power. Without further ado, Raiden immediately landed a punch at Shiva. Shiva was overwhelmed by the attacks from Raiden. Raiden tried to finish off Shiva using the Jizo's embrace technique, but Shiva stepped forward to carry out his attack, and this time Shiva managed to turn things around. Because he was too focused on attacking, Shiva didn't realize that Raiden had managed to lock one of his hands. With his power, Raiden managed to destroy Shiva's arm. The gods who watched the incident were shocked and couldn't believe it. From then on, Raiden would use his full power. The audience from God's side even prayed for Shiva's safety. Meanwhile, the gods who Shiva had defeated and also Rudra, who were present there, shouted that in every punch of Shiva, there were 1116 powers from the Indian gods. Meanwhile, Shiva, who heard the cheers became excited again. When Shiva came to attack Raiden, his attack was easily dodged. Even Shiva was the one who got hit by Raiden. It didn't stop there. This time they gave each other blows and stomped their heads. Because both of their heads were very hard, they both felt dizzy. Shiva began to issue his dance moves. Zeus thought that Shiva's dance was a war dance. After dancing, Shiva was able to beat Raiden, and Shiva was easily knocked over Raiden. Raiden didn't give up and enlarged his arm muscles to block Shiva's attack. Shiva's dance was so fast that his body emitted smoke. On the other hand, Yurikaze encouraged Raiden to use his full power. This time Raiden retook his stance to start the attack again, and this time, he needed to issue his forbidden technique to attack Shiva, which was the Yadagarasa technique. Without further ado, he immediately came to attack Shiva while Shiva, who was surprised by the attack, could only parry Raiden's attack. But who would have thought that Raiden's attack had hit Shiva and made Shiva's three arms break off when he repelled Raiden's attack? However, from such great strength, Raiden experienced excruciating pain, where all his muscles began to rebel from within his body. Thrud wasn't able to hold his muscles. Raiden asked Thrud to help control his muscles again. Thrud finally agreed to Raiden's wishes even though she initially refused them. Shiva then looked at Rudra and the gods he had defeated, even at all the gods who were praying for his safety. Seeing this, Shiva's spirit rose again. Shiva immediately pumped his heart to beat faster, making Shiva's body turn red. According to legend, if Shiva did this, Shiva would dance the Tandava or the Dance of the Universe's Destruction. Shiva would burn his own body, and with his ashes, Shiva would rebuild the world. Meanwhile, Brunhild, who saw this, thought they had a lot in common. Both Shiva and Raiden thought that they could help the weak with their strength. Meanwhile, Shiva and Raiden were attacking each other. However, Raiden suffered burns due to warding off an attack from Shiva. According to Brunhild, the longer it went on, the more Raiden's muscles would surely break. Herms also said that this was Shiva's last trump card, and the longer it was used, Shiva's body would be destroyed. They both started to feel intense pain but didn't seem to care about it. The two of them relaunched their attacks to finish each other off. Meanwhile, the wrestlers continued to support Raiden. Even just hearing their cheers, Raiden was excited again to attack Shiva. At the same time, Rudra also cheered Shiva, and it made Shiva's spirit burn. After attacking each other, this time, they would use their best techniques to end this battle quickly. Unexpectedly, Raiden's arm had to be severed when an attack from Shiva hit him. Raiden wasn't scared at all, and he instead thanked Shiva because, for the first time, he was able to unleash all of his power. Raiden also thanked Thrud for helping him in this match. Just with one kick, Shiva managed to kill Raiden. So this fifth match was won by Shiva, the god of destruction from India. After the match ended, the wrestlers paid their last respects to Raiden.
Later, Shiva told Zeus the humans were awesome, and Zeus couldn't agree more with Shiva. Meanwhile, Gaul was sad by Thrud's defeat in this match. Brunhild tried to calm Gaul, but because she felt she was wrong, she banged hard on the door with her hand until it bled profusely. Brunhild then entered the room where the representatives of humanity were. In a different place, Zeus approached Buddha, casually resting under the tree. Zeus told him of the fifth battle, which was interesting to watch. Not only that, but Zeus also asked Buddha to fight in the sixth round. Buddha could only smile while hugging Zeus. Meanwhile, Gull went into a room to find bandages to treat Brunhild's wound. Upon entering the room, she overheard the talk of the seven auspicious gods. They talked about someone named Zero Fuko. Brunhild did not know who this figure was, and Gull felt the others should know this. Unexpectedly, the seven auspicious gods found out that Gull was eavesdropping. When Gull was about to be beaten by them came Jack the Ripper, who casually invited them to drink tea with him. Shumatsu no Valkyrie Part 2 has ended. Thank you very much to the viewers who have watched from start to finish. Please like this video if you enjoy the video and subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.